Hello everyone, my name is Dredden and today we're going to talk about all the new stuff in Alpha 18. So in Alpha 18, a bunch of things have changed, like always, and we're going to talk about broadly the new progression system, the world and certain optimizations, new weapons, because there's a bunch, a bunch of gameplay changes, and a couple of just other random things that just doesn't really fit in another category. This information mostly comes from Twitter and from YouTube slash Twitch, the various videos that have been released so far. Also check in the description below for the links to the actual release notes because there's way more detail there than what I'm providing. And I'm only covering the main things that caught my eye or that I had information on over these last couple of months. So there's definitely a lot more information out there go check it out for yourself and hopefully we learn a lot as we play alpha 18. Oh guys with alpha 18 comes a very big overhaul of the progression no longer do you have skills and attributes that are all over the place they are going to be rebalancing the game in a way that is more like it was in the past some people thought that alpha 17 was a step backwards in gameplay so balance is supposed to be more like it was past. This is going to allow us to have more varied gameplay styles available to us. So each attribute is going to have a melee and a ranged option, as well as the crafting skills based around that. Okay, so for example, agility now governs knives, bows, and handguns, which now also includes the SMG. The SMG has been kind of classed down into a handgun. All right, so it's been said that there are over 250 books in that have been added. They have also added some sets of books. So it's sets of seven that you get. And when you combine them all together, like you get all seven of them, you get an extra little perk from them. So here are a bunch of them. The Enforcer book, which basically the more you kind of take on the role of like this Enforcer by um, having these books, the more damage you do with magnums, the if you have certain clothes like the suit, it helps you out. Corrupt cops do more damage to normal cops, and the, your bartering skill gets better because I guess you can kind of like intimidate them. Um, and so yeah, you kind of end up being more like an enforcer. Not that you are one, you just kind of have that vibe to you kind of going on with your character but it doesn't it's not limited to just that of course you can get other sets of books which give you just as many bonuses in other areas right for example the next one we have here is the great heist and this means that you can do a little more damage to safes uh you find more stuff you know how to use c4 better you're able to break into land claims a little bit better uh, apparently if you have a bunch of money on you, you can take less fall damage. Um, sure. And you're better at sneaking. And uh, you even have a chance to get past the auto turrets of various places. So you become a great thief, pretty much. The automatic weapons collection. It's all about doing more damage with automatic weapons. Uh, doing, Having to do less maintenance on them. And you can craft the short range incendiary ammo. And then if you get all of them, you have a very high chance of dismemberment if you keep shooting the same target. The Wasteland Treasures book. The Wasteland Treasures book is all about just figuring out how to get more stuff from different things you'd find out there uh, in buildings and stuff and just getting in more stuff. Also, there's a couple of things that'll help you survive. For example, um, one of the books is how to get um, water by, from murky water by using coal and murky water. And... And you can also make cloth from plant fiber. That's kind of an interesting one. For the Fireman's Almanac, you get some better heat resistance. You get a Fireman's Axe, which does more block damage than uh, damaged enemies. You get faster attacks with axes. Fire weapons do more damage for you. You're less likely to be lit on fire. You chop faster through coal and burnt wood. You can craft a Iron Fireman Helmet and take less damage as well when you're wearing it. You also get this completion bonus when you collect the entire set, which is in the burnt forest, you sprint for longer and have no encumbrance. All right, for the Lucky Looters series of books, 
you find more dukes, more ammo, more brass, more lead, more junk, then more food, then medical supplies, then once you collect the entire set, you find that zombies drop more loot. So there you go. For the needle and thread, you end up being able to craft a bunch of items in the game, which are all clothing. So you start off with winter wear, then leg wear, which is like jeans, skirts, overalls. And then you can do shoes. Then after that, it's desert wear, which is uh, shorts and tank tops and hats to keep the sun off. Then you got puffer coats. Then you can do pockets, uh, which are remove two encumbrance instead of just one. And when you collect the entire set of this, you can craft military clothing. Um, there's also this tip that they were saying that even right at the beginning of the game, you can do small pockets using one or well some duct tape and some cloth i'm not quite sure how much uh, to craft a pocket to remove one encumbrance so this pocket thing that they give you for this one is a little bonus at the end night stalker is all about being stealthy so here it is you get better sneak damage at night then better stealth at night then bladed weapons do more damage at night you're never encumbered at night bows will do more damage at night more xp from kills at night then <laughs> level seven you get or the seventh book is 50 percent um more sneak damage at night and then if you get all of them it's a plus 200 percent damage at night from collecting all seven that's just crazy i don't know it should be fun the batter up series is a uh, melee related set of books for the club and it goes like this you get more damage with clubs then you can craft a baseball hat and leather a letter jacket and you take less damage while wearing them then you get uh, power attack enemy legs to slow them down then power attack to increase your knockdown then bats and clubs break slower then you can craft baseball bats on one of them um you take less damage from clubs and once you collect the entire set if you kill some zombie with a power attack, you can refill your stamina right like that. This is probably going to be my personal favorite because I am a heavy melee person who just, this is why this is my thing. <laughs> so this would be sweet. Okay, for the rest of these, we don't really have a whole lot of information, but there's some. So for the Hunter's Journal, it's basically do more damage against different types of animals with each volume, I guess. The Art of Mining, they say enhance your life as a miner with new craftable equipment and mining tricks to one-shot ores I mean, that sounds awesome <laughs> mining can can get pretty boring but you know who knows we'll see what uh the entire experience is like ranger's guide to archery become the ultimate archer with this set of books you can even craft exploding arrows that will be nice pistol pete master the use of nine millimeter weapons with this set of books so yeah your nine mil will do a lot more damage and probably a lot of other little things shotgun messiah become the action hero you always dreamed of with this complimentary set of books sniper if exploding heads is your thing <laughs> look no further craft special ammunition and ghillie suits and more so basically yeah become an awesome sniper urban combat become the ultimate commando with urban combat and look like a sexual tyrannosaurus and another little tip is that uh, you can see all the knowledge sets that you have in the skills window on the far right so let's get into world and optimizations pretty early on they showed that this little tweet here from february and now apparently the game has better rivers and lakes we'll see how that goes you can see here that there's a bunch of random squiggles all over the place i don't think there's any sort of continental divide or any sort of thing that relates to real geology other than just sort of appearance um but yeah that's kind of cool. Another thing that they've shown off a fair bit is actually these new splat maps that they use for this texture. Um, this is a bunch of the new high definition textures for the desert. And there's also the spear here, but we're going to get to that in the weapon section. So there's a whole bunch of this stuff. You can see that these bluffs and cliffs look a lot better than they used to they're not just this sort of weird stretched out ground texture they have this actual sort of broken rock kind of texture that kind of looks like it's been a bit weathered has shows some geology 
Looks a fair bit nicer overall. Here's some more of the textures and stuff shown off by Joel as he talks about these new HD textures for terrain. He's definitely upping everything slowly for the various alphas, bringing it up to a more graphically high standard for you know, high definition, which is kind of nice. In this one, this is um, just a quick little one that shows us sidewalks. So the sidewalks in Alpha 17 were fine. They were okay, <laughs> I guess. And this one though, they look a lot better. You can see the curbs and the little dips where people walk and stuff. Like it just looks nicer. It just, I think it'll make the cities look just that much more crisp. They've added these new loot harvestable army trucks. So you'll just, I guess, find these random army trucks around. It's kind of cool though. It's going to be nice. It will add a little bit more variety to the game. A little bit of something new to make it just feel a little bit more lived in. So yeah, you just walk up to it and I'm not quite sure. Hopefully the whole thing is searchable and it's not just this little doorway, but you know, we'll see. We'll see what they've done with it. Yeah, they're pointing on to the wheel here. So I'm guessing that the whole thing is going to actually be searchable. We'll see. So here I noticed in Hayden's playthrough when they were running through this, it's actually kind of hard to tell now because they've changed things. I think this is the burnt biome, but they've changed the wasteland to look a little bit more like the burnt biome. I think they've been getting rid of some of the ground textures. You do see this other neat new terrain where they have these really tall pillars. Um, I don't really know why, but I mean, I guess in some places in the world that kind of stuff exists. So we need to have some more variety like that. I thought it was kind of a cool little background. They're changing the bookshelf so that it looks a little bit different. It has less of a flat texture on it now and has more of these little books modeled right onto it. Look forward to that. They've added a new wagon to the west kind of set of uh, items so that now you'll be able to you know if you're creating POIs and worlds you'll be able to put these little wagons in there at certain places they're kind of all run down maybe the modders at some point might make a rideable wagon that would kind of be interesting yeah just adds a little more flavor I guess and here we have modular wood piles so that the POIs can have a little bit more of a nice look those big big round logs that are like one meter round are a little bit big for the fireplace most people's fireplaces so this will make it a little bit nicer looking okay so next we get into some pretty neat stuff that hasn't been added for a while but I i've wanted this for quite a while and some other people have also wanted some fun things like these so here we go mountain lion prime ends up fighting one of these in this little bit of a stream here um, don't know much about its stats or anything at this point, but you know, that's fine. We'll figure them out pretty quick. They are in the snowy biome. The coyote is in the desert biome. And this is one that just kind of ends up running up and attacking the group of them while they're playing on the stream here. And then they take that one out and fight another one real quick. I guess this is a good point to put in that they're apparently adding in another type of zombie called the Demolisher, which is a zombie that is basically a zombie that's got a bunch of bombs on it. Uh, and so I guess he's a guy who goes around, he just, you know, being, so I guess he would have been maybe like a bandit or just a person who goes around looting, but he has a bunch of C4 on him. And I guess if you shoot, there's supposed to be a red dot on him or a red point if he's far away from your base he'll blow up hopefully he'll take some zombies out with him but if he gets near your base and he blows up he's meant to blow holes right into the side of your base it's supposed to happen late in the game so we'll see if that happens i think joel has wanted something like this for a long time he was going to go with the behemoth um but then too many people didn't really like that direction so I guess now this is the alternative. We'll see how that um, goes off. It's also been said that there's supposed to be better AI in the POIs, so that there isn't so many zombies in the smaller, lower tier ones, and there are, you know, they just react differently, I guess. And in this video, that has got some of the changes relating to the attribute system, he talks about the dynamic music a little bit. It's kind of just sort of rolls up on us and it kind of surprises, surprised me. And rockets and pipe bombs, Molotov cocktails, all those kind of things are governed by this perk. 
Um, we just moved it. I think it used to be. I don't know where it was before we moved it, though. We'll see how that plays in the game. I mostly just play with it off because of my Let's Plays, but that's not the case for everyone. Alpha 18 is also supposed to have a new occlusion culling system. Um, so basically, this um, helps remove things that the player wouldn't be able to see um, because there's like an obstacle in the way. So this should allow older computers to be able to run the game a little more smoothly because they won't have to render quite as much stuff. This is supposed to make the game a bit more performant. In many AAA games, uh, they remove as much as they can from what the player can't see. But in an open world voxel game where things are destructible, there's no way that the creators can go through and be like, oh, well, they can't see this object behind this building because or like they'll never be able to see it uh, at this location and so they have to basically just make a more dynamic system for that and so they've been working on that hopefully it works out well so ores will spawn as a boulder of one type on the surface and beneath that will be a vein of that particular mineral that you can mine and sometimes they're close together sometimes they're not um, so you just have to look around for the right kind of boulder and then you can mine into that so Alpha 18 is supposed to bring 16 new weapons. Under the category of new weapons and items, there are things like a lockpicks, grenade, brass knuckles, spiked knuckles, primitive spear, iron spear, steel spear, wooden bat, steel bat, stone sledgehammer, steel sledgehammer, the M60 heavy machine gun, a double barrel shotgun, a timed charge, taser baton, and a junk turret. And apparently they also removed steel ammunition, so that's gone. So here is the M60. There's a small video here that's showing how it looks at night. Hopefully this heavy machine gun is really great for mowing down the horde. In fact, here's a bunch of them <laughs> destroying some bears with this thing. Okay, here's the junk turret. It looks kind of like a small compressed air gun that you feed in. Uh, just scrap iron into onto the side and then it fires that out uh, so you kind of put it down and it will automatically target things and shoot for you one of my favorite things that I've added into my mod and a lot of other modders have added is the new spears so here's uh, the stone spear so spears can be thrown which is fantastic and after they've been thrown you can go and actually retrieve them as you can see here, they stick right into the body, kind of like the arrows do. And um, Arlene has the one right through her chest there. <laughs> and apparently, yeah, you can go retrieve it afterwards. So we'll see. Here's some concept art for the, the spiked knuckles. But they decided to go with this corkscrew here instead. Just to give it some weirdness, some quirkiness. Apparently, when you get a good melee build to happen, you can just pretty much knock out a feral white, which is pretty awesome. And here is the Sledgehammer's new model. Um, it basically looks like a big old weight <laughs> that's been, I don't know, leather strapped onto a stick or something. Um, that'd be effective, but that weight on there is going to be freaking heavy. Here's the Taser Baton. It looks like a nice weapon. It's a mechanism of action. It can be charged up and you can end up hitting a zombie that will then stun them and you can uh, keep getting a couple more shots in if you have to. Uh, here's a quick little show of what they have for stats. Here's a little bit of a, a video of Prime charging his up with a couple hits and then looking for some other zombie to, to knock out. But the basic way it works is um, every entity you hit charges it and when you hit uh, four times with it then it will uh, have the charge. A normal attack charges at one, and a power attack charges at two, so it technically only takes two power attacks to charge it up. The new baseball bats, I have no footage of what they look like. This one here is from my mod, and uh, we'll just sort of see what they decide to throw in. This is the new ghillie suit. Uh, ghillie suits are suits that are designed to blend in with the environment, so my guess is that this one will be a lot better for stealth. Um, allowing you to probably sneak around a lot more. It's um, 
pretty good. Here's some footage of one of the lockpicks. Uh, after a bunch of debate in the forums, the lockpicks were finally accepted as an item. There's a frag grenade, an impact grenade, and a sticky grenade. If I can tell from what I've seen, it looks like one just uh, has a timer on it and will explode to destroy everything around it. And the impact grenade, it seems to just uh, hit the ground and explode. And the sticky one just sticks to something and then explodes. Kind of interesting on Horde Night. I'm sure some people will blow themselves up. It'll be good times. There's also a timed charge, like a C4 timed charge that you can either put onto safe so it'll help it blow up but it also sticks to entities and so you can put them on other players or other um zombies or whatever why not and they will just explode as one would expect <laughs> and so if it's on a safe ideally it'll open but uh sometimes not apparently and seems pretty fatal to uh most people so that should be fun the double barreled shotgun shoots two shots. You can double tap to shoot two sides at once and is governed by the boomstick under strength. It's been said that there's a supposed to be more variation in the feel of zombies, um, in the pathing of zombies. So hopefully that's the case. It's, there, it's said to be less predictable, more dynamic and interesting. And so that even us old players uh, are surprised more often. TFB has added farm plots for Alpha 18, and to make them, they're just like four pieces of wood, uh, 10 pieces of rotting flesh, and 25 pieces of nitrate powder, and you just craft them uh, in your backpack, it looks like, and then that can be um, put down on the ground or sort of sunken into the ground or whatever you want then you just plant things on it like normal and uh, yeah i guess that's the new farming system they've also changed it so that there are sweeping strikes so these strikes are basically as shown here something that you can you don't have to be directly on their heads anymore like in alpha 17 you would end up missing a strike completely even though your arcing swing uh, does pass through their head because you can hit someone behind them, but not on them, which is kind of silly and irked a lot of people. And so they put in this arc based attack and now it senses that. And it, if you do, sometimes they call it a grazing strike too, because sometimes if your arrow isn't on them at all and does hit them, then it still does some damage, but not necessarily all. And it's also that they changed the quest progression a little bit. It seems to still go bedroll axe, but then it, you only have to craft the shirt and the pants for the plant fiber clothing one. Then it goes to wood club, then primitive bow, and only one stone arrow, not two. So only one stone arrow now. And then when you get to the one that is three frames, it'll now only be one frame that you need to place an upgrade. So that's much faster. And then it goes campfire and trader like normal. And so it just seems a little bit more streamlined, which is kind of nice. Here it shows Prime just clicking right on the little uh, icon on the side of the skill to buy it, rather than going up and clicking the buy button. So it's kind of neat that they've kind of streamlined that out. The Stamina Light Harvest seems to take very little stamina, and this is good because in Alpha 17 they overdid it with the stamina, and so now it's much easier to keep going and harvesting more and more stuff uh here you can see the remnant poi it is like there's actually a number of them but apparently they're smaller pois that just are left over they don't really have sleepers in them but you know they're not really the best or maybe they might only have a couple of sleepers and the idea is that you go into these things and it's not going to be a big hassle to go claim one for a small little base and you can just, yeah, kind of convert it up, build it up into something small for yourself, and go from there. Vultures are still evil. <laughs> they really hated Prime. And so, yeah, they go after him pretty, pretty much the whole time in this stream. <laughs> um, 
also it seemed like the sledgehammers seem to have enough range to not break your ankles so that might be awesome all right so over here joel is showing off that the perks now have the ability to show a bit more of information about what's going on they have this little area down here where you can hover over to get a bit of more information up top here and he's talked about he's done a lot of research on mining and has pulled a lot of the slang and stuff from that research and so he's tried to incorporate that into the game they're also adding power doors that are craftable by the player so that means the doors the garage doors and the bridges can now be powered to open and close which is so good it's only been a modded thing for a while now there's a new shape menu for getting to all the types of blocks that you need all you need to do is to craft the type of block wood flagstone etc then press r to select the block shape you need and just start building um it should hopefully reduce the weird counting that you might have to do if you're crafting certain sets of blocks to build a particular type of base you can just switch between them a lot more rapidly so yeah i think that'll be pretty good joel added a couple of other things right here you can see a toolbox which is pretty interesting um i'm guessing it's a small storage container that you can put your items in we'll see and here is a timed charge uh, they have this new loot pile here which is a 3d model of canned foods so you can find that around kind of like you have the ammo piles and stuff now in alpha 17 so you can search this one i also noticed there's a uh, pure mineral water which is apparently even better than normal water for letting yourself regen stamina and that seems to be 15 percent, which is five percent better than regular water so that's pretty nice um, apparently joel has toned down the dyes so this green dye here looks a lot more sort of just normal not like a big bright bold color uh this is must be the pink and it is also not incredibly out there so that's not too bad and this one i could guess it's green i don't know could be something else need your morning coffee like me dfb added a new coffee machine to the game they've also got a bunch of high definition icons so we have uh, the testosterone one here and i've got a picture over here that shows a bunch more of them and so hopefully they uh look pretty good uh, they changed the ratio the size ratios of them so we'll see how this fits in with the little bar at the bottom of the box the lock picks um can be stacked to 50 and they are also you can't pick door locks with them unity 2019 what they use for this latest version um, will have the incremental garbage collector which is something new that unity has introduced normally a game will have a garbage collector spike where it will find all the old things that are no longer needed and then get rid of them but the incremental garbage collector just spreads this process of finding everything over a couple of the different frames and so there's no frame that looks like it stutters or lags and that allows for the player to have a better experience all right they've uh, got some new car models got some footage of that here uh, but there's some pictures also over here on twitter joel was very excited about having windy roads in the wilderness Another neat little perk that they're adding is the penetrator perk. So now you'll be able to shoot through multiple zombies and uh, probably kill about five of them with one shot. And so, yeah, once you get good at that, you'll be able to really use a killing corridor to its extreme. Except for that they're probably going to change the AI so that the killing corridor doesn't work as well. We'll see. They've done three new trader voices, and apparently one is for trader Jen. So hopefully we'll not have to hear this well how do you do friend i'm gonna hear something much nicer <laughs> we'll see be seeing you if you guys like this video hit the like button and share it with some friends if you want to learn more about how to play seven days to die or if you want to learn more news about seven days to die hit the subscribe button and i will see you in the next video bye bye